Hi, welcome to this how-to Azure Native Files application volume group for Oracle. My name is Arte Gier, Technical Marketing Engineer for Azure Native Files. This how-to is about getting the best results from running Oracle databases on Azure VMs. We'll show you how to deploy your Oracle database in Azure, going over preparations, sizing, optimizing storage volume placement for use with Oracle, and how to use the application volume group for Oracle feature for this purpose. You can migrate an Oracle database to the cloud several ways. If you're looking for the easy way, avoid refactoring and consider running Oracle on Azure Virtual Machines. Consider using network connected storage as that might help save on application license costs since network throughput is throttled by Azure VMs at higher speeds than managed disk. Also, network connected storage offers far greater expansion options, both from a capacity and performance perspective, without upgrading the VM SKU. In the end, you will want the database to perform at least as good or better in the cloud than it does on premises. To add some key benefits to your deployment, like built in data protection and replication options, as well as highly scalable performance and capacity, select Azure Native Files volumes for storing the essential database files. We will also cover an additional feature that will allow your database to perform even better. As always, the best results are achieved with proper preparations. You'll need to decide on what VM SKU to use, one with sufficient number of cores and enough memory from the available list of VM SKUs. And if you hadn't found out already, Azure supports a wide range of Linux-based VMs to choose from, some of which are highly suitable for running Oracle workloads. Part of the VM selection is the storage throughput required for the database. Consider that you can consolidate multiple databases on a single Azure VM to reduce complexity and cost. Large and high transaction databases should be deployed on one or more capable VMs and may require multiple storage volumes to achieve the required throughput. Consult your Oracle and Azure specialist for detailed guidance, but let's have a look at some of the options you can explore. Start by reading the documentation located at the provided link, or use a QR code to go to Solution Architectures Using Azure Native Files and scroll to the Oracle section. The short link to this info is aka.ms slash anf solutions hashtag oracle. Sizing tools are essential to match the use case in question to the most optimal Azure Native Files volume configuration. Obtain AWR report from the current environment to obtain performance information. You can process AWR reports through the Atropos service. The site also has SQL scripts to obtain database size info, which you will also need. Capture AWR reports on the on-premises environment at time intervals when there is high activity on the Oracle instance to capture the highest load on the system. You can import multiple AWR report files into the Atropos AWR module. Before you select files to import, be sure to select the JSON output format checkbox to generate the JSON file required for the Atropos ANF module. Your browser will download a JSON file. You will need this file for the next step. Click the ANF module and import the downloaded JSON file from the AWR module. If the AWR reports were not accompanied by database size information, adjust database sizes manually for each of the SIDs listed in the database system section. Alternately, you can input size information manually in the manual input section. Press add system when done. Now open the single database or multi-database sizing panels to see the ANF capacity pool recommendations. Note that the most optimal service level for the deployment will show with a green background color. In this case, premium is the most cost effective. Although you can get good results by creating Azure Native Files volumes one by one, you will not have control over the storage endpoint selection. And more demanding databases may require more throughput or capacity than a single Azure Native Files volume can support. We're introducing application volume group for Oracle, which is a volume deployment feature, which optimizes multiple volume placement in the Azure infrastructure in a single atomic operation. Volume placement is optimized in the availability zone of choice, which should match the VM availability zone. And application volume group uses anti-affinity rules to spread data and log volumes over multiple direct connect storage endpoints to reduce latency and avoid network contention while applying affinity rules for volumes like optional binary and backup volumes that do not need separate storage endpoints. Use the QR code or the link to go to the introduction page for Application Volume Group for Oracle. Before we can use Application Volume Group for Oracle, we need to create a capacity pool 
um, or ensure we have a suitable one already. In the Azure portal, select the subscription to deploy your Oracle database into. Create a NetApp account if you don't already have one. In this account, create a capacity pool with the service level and size as per the Atropos sizing. Be sure to select the manual quality of service type for this pool to allow throughput allotment independently from the volume size in the next steps. Click your NetApp account and open the storage service tab on the left and click application volume groups. Select Oracle in the create volume group deployment type and click next. Enter the Oracle SID for the database. The SID will become part of the proposed volume naming as you can see in the group name. Enter a group description. Next, enter a number of data volumes from the Atropos recommendation. You can create up to eight data volumes using application volume group for Oracle. Complete the form with the database size, percentage extra space for snapshots, and the Oracle database throughput from the Atropos recommendation. And then click Next Volume Group. Select the same availability zone as the VMs. Use the default setting of standard network settings and select the capacity pool you created previously. If the capacity pool doesn't show up here, go back and select the manual QoS type in the capacity pool, then restart the application volume group workflow. Select the virtual network of the VMs and select or create the Azure NetApp Files delegated subnet. Click Next Tags. Enter any tags for resource tracking and billing purposes and click Next Protocol. Most deployments will require the use of NFSv3 selected here. You can select NFSv4.1 and enable Kerberos, but note that this may have a performance implication. Optionally, in the Export Policy section, limit access to the volumes to the IP address range of your VMs. Click Next Volumes. A list of proposed volumes is displayed. Nothing is deployed at this point. You can adjust the size and performance allocations here, and you can remove volumes that you do not need, marked with asterisks from the deployment list. Once a volume is removed from the list, you cannot add it back without restarting the application volume group workflow. You can change settings for each of the proposed volumes by clicking the volume name links. You can also change size and throughput after deployment without interruption to the service, which is a great benefit of using Azure NetApp Files volumes. When you're done, click Next, Review and Create. A validation process will now do a pre-check for the deployment. Check that the validation passes. Then click Create Volume Group. The application volume group workflow will now deploy the volumes. This may take a while. Note that if for whatever reason the deployment of a single volume fails, the whole deployment will be rolled back to leave no incomplete deployments. After a while, the deployment should complete and show the deployment complete dialog. Click Go to Resource. This is the resulting volume list. Note that the individual mount paths are spread over multiple storage endpoints, a feature of application volume group. These volumes can now be manipulated like any other Azure NetApp Files volume, meaning you can resize them as needed and change throughput allotment as needed without interruption to the volume service. You may need to enlarge the hosting capacity pool for each of these or move the volumes to a different capacity pool like with a different service level, but all these manipulations can be made without service interruption. The volumes are ready to be mounted onto the Oracle VM. To further optimize performance, use Oracle Direct NFS or DNFS instead of kernel NFS. See the provided link for an article describing the details. As the graph shows, using DNFS can have a huge performance benefit over kernel NFS. Here's a summary of what we covered in this how-to. For large and demanding Oracle deployments in Azure, use networked storage and use application volume group for Oracle to deploy Azure NetApp Files volumes. Volume placement is optimized. Volumes are spread over multiple Direct Connect storage endpoints. And performance can be further optimized by using Oracle Direct NFS. And using networked storage with your Oracle deployment may require a smaller VM SKU compared to ma a managed disk deployment. And on top of this, the data protection and replication capabilities, uninterrupted scalability, and superior performance of Azure NetApp Files for the best possible overall experience of your Oracle database in Azure. This completes this how-to. For more information, scan the QR code or punch in the link on your browser. We hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.